In tonight's reading, we will see disappointment transformed into faith. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Wednesday. It seems like Thursday or Friday. It's only Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, the 5th of April in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word and prayer. We are now up to week 14, day 3 of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Luke chapter 24. Uh, so we have read yesterday of our Lord's trial, and well, his arrest, his trial, and his crucifixion, and now tonight we turn our attention to the resurrection. So let's turn to our text. But on the first day of the week, excuse me, sorry, Luke chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. That very day two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened, he, happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Thus far, Luke chapter 24. It is really remarkable the disappointment that fills this chapter. Uh, the, dis the disappointment in all of the disciples, and not just the apostles, but the other disciples who were not among the twelve, that were chosen as apostles. Even seeing the tomb empty, even seeing the grave, the grave clothes, the shroud folded carefully and left there on the stone, even seeing all that and seeing that what the women had said was true, still they were seized by disappointment. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And they felt like they were disappointed. They felt like they were disappointed until Jesus did what? Until he opened the scriptures to them. Until he opened it to them God's word and showed them that all had happened exactly as it needed to in order for him to do just what they hoped, to redeem Israel. Now, if God's word then, which to us is just, excuse me, which is only what to us is known as the Old Testament, if the Old Testament alone was able to do that for them, to turn their disappointment into joy. How much more is God's word able to do the same for you and me? There are certainly many times when you and I are disappointed by this life, disappointed by life in this world. The things we hope for come to nothing. Even, even the things that we hope for 
uh, for for God's people, for the for the blessing of the church, for the for the well-being of the church, for the well-being of the gospel in this world. Even those things seem to have uh, seem to disappoint us at times. And in that, in those moments. Scripture opens our eyes. The, the message of not just all that had been promised in the Old Testament, but all that Jesus came and did and accomplished, that message assures you that everything that happens is according to the Father's will, according to to his plan of salvation and serves always only that plan. So for example, when our world seems to be controlled by evil men, when events seem to be uh, just, you know, we, we see seemingly random natural disasters, when we see all kinds of fear and chaos, it is only permitted as long and as far as it serves God's plan to save you. And again, as always, whenever you're tempted to doubt that, he points you back to the cross and all the promises that were fulfilled there, seemingly impossible promises that he made happen. You have their witness, the witness of those who who saw the empty tomb. You saw the witness of those who, who saw their risen Lord, who saw his hands and his feet and his side. And their testimony is true. And that word is able to turn, still is able to turn your disappointment to joy that God's word, God's work, is being fulfilled even now. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word in prayer. God willing, we will see you, well, God willing, we'll see you here in person tomorrow night for our Holy Thursday, our Monday Thursday worship. Uh, but we will still post this devotion as well to stay on track with the readings. So in the meantime, God's blessings on your night.